<laughs> okay, let's get going. Yay! So this this is a really really good um, opportunity actually to out what we all face it sometimes, which is a little bit of a distraction and a little bit of the slowing down of what we perceive as our intention being realized. Meaning, I want to be here, I'm on time, let's get going, and then it, it seems to be a delay. And the delay, the word delay, is linked to time, yes? So we operate inside of time more than outside of time. And I'll get into that a little bit more. I just wanted to frame that for you. You might think, oh my gosh, what are we in for? <laughs> but time is a very, very um, strong, uh, let's say, an awareness for you to acknowledge. Because time is what you do as you move through this life with your physical body. Time is the result of gravity and solar waves, energy from the sun. So it gives us the experience of moving through and aging. So if you can transcend time and you can unwind the concept of time that has been fed to you, then aging is not a problem. Aging is not a concern. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Welcome, welcome. Good morning, Good ladies. Good morning. Sorry, we got lost. No problem at all. We're here now. Wonderful. So, thank you for adding value, contributing your energy to a space like this. It takes people like us to show up on the cosmic radar dish on the sonar for stuff to happen, for evolution to occur, for light, more light to be brought into certain regions, certain areas. So by you showing up this morning, you may know some of the people in the room, you may not know many of the people in the room, but I can 100% with full conviction and clarity confirm that you will have more in common with the people in this room than most, some of those people that are outside of this room that we call family, friends, colleagues or neighbours. And so the idea of this, this environment uh, to bring people together is so that you can light up. You can be free to share who you are. <coughs> You can engage in like-minded conversations with other people that feel exactly the same way as you. And so each of you has a unique gift or a set of gifts that sometimes we feel a little bit, let's say, afraid to share. Can anyone relate to that? Yeah. yeah? So I'm not sure I want to share it because I'm not sure what the response is going to be. I'm not sure whether I'm going to be judged or not. Can you relate? Yeah. I'm not sure whether it fits in to a protocol or to the system, to the rules <laughs> made by men and women, but men as general human mm. kind. So, so the opportunity to come together today, some will want to take notes. That's okay. I'm inviting you to experience and to listen beyond your ears. Because what you hear is part of a, with these physical ears, is a filtered, diluted series of uh, uh, um, impressions of information. I want you to feel it with your body. So I want you to feel it with that part of you that is beyond the body. Is that okay? So that's the invitation. I'm not going to hold you down or get you in a headlock and say <laughs> you will hear it from yourselves or from your, your, your beingness. So let's have a bit of fun. We've got a couple of hours together. The, the first thing I'd like you to do is I'd like you to acknowledge where you are in your universe. Acknowledge where you are. 
what I mean by that is where you are located in your field, in your environment right now. And by location, I mean awareness of what you're experiencing right now. Are you experiencing a restlessness, a stirring? Or are you experiencing a, an excitement, a question, or an ongoing series of questions that is like, where am I to go next? What's the, what is this leading to? So just park yourself for a moment in the awareness of where you are right now. Awareness is a timeless thing, meaning you can have awareness in an instant. You can feel awareness, you can hear awareness, you can speak awareness, but most importantly, you sense it. You have an awareness and it <coughs> happens within you really, really quickly. Okay? What doesn't bring, what, what um, disavows it or contracts it or slows it down is our disbelief that is what we received and that is what we have interpreted as being true for us. Can you relate? Yeah. So, so we're going to hit a, upon a couple of those areas today. Because, as I'll explain shortly, the backbone behind the Living Light Tour is exactly as it sounds. It is to live lightly. It is to Walk lightly upon the earth, knowing full well that you are here for a purpose, that you are, you have meaning and you have gifts to share and encourage out and forward of others. So living light doesn't mean that you need to be, you know, just eating cheese and corn every day. Living light is an inside job. It's our, what awareness we bring to our environment. And also what awareness we bring to ourselves too. Because each one of you, as I can see, I can look at you and I can see your physical body as you can see me. But beyond your physical body, there is, you can call it an aura, a halo, there is, a, there is a, an energy that is beyond the body. Would you agree? Yeah. So there's an energy that's beyond the body. That's our living light. That is our full potential. That is our eternal self. And so, to move ourselves forward in time, to move ourselves on purpose forward with our gifts, is really, really important. Now more than ever. And the gifts do not need to be doing what I'm doing. They could be something that is in the feet in the in the garden, it could be something that involves other people, it could be creative art or music, it could be being there and holding space for people in as a carer's role. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Afternoon. Apologies. Yeah, good afternoon. Day. Gosh, what's this? <laughs> so come and find. So if we just shuffle in just a little um, Body temperatures should start to uh, increase as you get a little closer. So come in, Steph, this, this space. Good to see doors and Erica. Yeah, it's rugby on. Sure, it is. It is. Is going up the front? No, I'll here you up the front. Oh, please up the front. So doors. Uh, okay, so. So it's all. Sorry. So the, the beautiful aspect of, of the living light is that when you bring it into your awareness that you are the gift in your own life, in your family's life, in your partnership, in your workplace, in your community, that does not come from an egoic concept. It is, I do what I do because of who I am. And that is the beingness that comes forward. So beingness is about presence. When you are present with yourself, it means you have your gifts, you have more available to you from your infinite field, 
from your field of potential, from your expanded field of light. And I make, uh, I'll try and do a, a half-hearted apology, but not really, <laughs> because we do go deep quickly, because there is a lot of fluff, and there is a lot of banter, and there is a lot of superficial conversations that we encourage and deal with, and I say deal with not so lightly, because you are here because you want to go deeper. Yes? Yeah. You want to understand, maybe you already do understand who you are, but maybe it's the appreciation of who you really are. Because appreciation is linked to gratitude, gratitude is linked to love. Love is the light that you are eternal. Yeah. And so without getting your kumbaya on you, and uh, you know, um, making some daisy chains and all those sort of things, we can do that later if you want. Yeah. I make no apology for going deep, because that's who I am. Are you okay with bodies doing strange things? Because I, when I go deep, I start to jump around in tears. Is... It does me. Okay, so... I sometimes end up on the floor. Okay, so if, if, there's a, if, um, if going deep, there is a, an element there that has you lose yourself, like the... the, the Prison itself. I'd like to be able to be connected and sitting and going through it rather than okay. find Thank myself. You. Well, well, this is a this is a, a wonderful opportunity that you have two strong pillars oh, next to you. And by come by saying this, you know, immediately our response is, "Holy crap! I'm sitting next to this person. What's going to happen? Am I going to get a, a foot She's in the eyeball?" Mom. Sorry. <laughs> Yes, yeah. But you were sitting next to people on your left and right purposefully. You are positioned purposefully. And who chose the seat? You did. You're and saving so, it for me next. Yeah, well, it was saved. I had no plan in it. I just said, take a seat from the front. And as it fills from the front out, we go to the second row. So who you're sitting next to on either side of you, there is a reason why you are sitting next to these people. You may, that may be um, made available to you sometime today. It may not be. But know that there is a reason, that nothing ever happens by chance. Okay, even when it seems that the obvious, the only way to explain something is that it's a chance happening. When you work and operate from yourself at the highest levels of consciousness and creation, you can see this web, this divine, where you trust in it. You may not necessarily see it, but you trust in this divine workings that who you are, where you are, and whom you're with is divinely orchestrated. Because you are the center of your universe, you're it. So 20, um, 22, 24, 25 people in this room, that means that there are 25 universes in this room. Because you seed your field. When I say seed, with your thoughts, with your intentions, with your wishes, hopes, dreams, desires, you cast those and interact with your field of energy. And you're doing it all the time. So, there will be a lot of information, and it's not meant to overwhelm you. I don't plan these. There is no whiteboard, there is no PowerPoint presentation. It is, you show up, and the availability that is presented through the consciousness of the group, each individual that, that, uh, that you are, sets the framework. So we can, we can dance with some depth, we can dance with some other levels. That's, it's entirely up to you. Okay. So, um, as we're waiting for a few more people to, to, um, to show up, I did ask a question earlier about what drew you to this event. And so, those that didn't get the opportunity to share, I'd just like another, say, three or four or five people to share what drew you to this event. So feel free to 
And if you want to clear your throat before you answer, that's great. I'd, I'd love to hear from you. <coughs> what I've already you? answered. Yeah, but so everyone else can hear again. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, it was just a good feeling. I just knew I had to come. Good. Yeah, you were the same? Mm -hmm. Good. Intuition. Intuition. Yeah. <coughs> a couple more? Doors? Yeah. Um, I had the pleasure of having Max speak to us in Huntley the night and uh, some people that were there, one person in particular wanted to come today, mm -hmm. so I'm coming, so we came together. And as, as luck would have it or whatever, whatever, the energy, the feel, we were all late. <laughs> And so everything works out in the divine whatever. It does. It does. I'm glad you said that. Yeah. One more, please. Um, I've seen it flick up on Facebook because I follow doors. Yeah. And um, I've kind of seen it there and looked through and oh yeah, that's interesting and kind of like it's been over here. The and then doors popped up me the other morning. And I was like, oh, okay, it's locked. And then I realised I already had a prior appointment for the Huntley one. Mm -hmm. It's good. It's good. It's funny how we feel the name Oh, yes. yes. I'd love you. I wasn't going to because mine was similar. I saw the flyer and I, yeah, I'm going to go to that. But if, if I actually dig deeper, I've been saying it's time to find a tribe around him to New Zealand because I have yes. tribes elsewhere, but I know my work is in New Zealand and I don't have a tribe in New Zealand. Mm. So that's, well, that's actually what got me out of bed today. Who, who uh, feels the same? I'd like to share actually, but yeah. I feel the same. I um, do a lot of uh, stuff with um, Matt Khan and I've done a bit with Panache, but yes. mainly Matt Khan. And it feels like they're all overseas. And uh, yes. who's the other one? Rupert Spira. Yes. And it's like, wow, someone in New Zealand, I have to go. Yeah, good, good. It's funny yeah. that you say Matt Khan. I was doing a an event earlier this year on the Gold Coast, and someone said, um, oh, uh, I'm here for this event, you know, check, checking in with his wife, and she was you know, quite heavily pregnant, and he was, uh, I think they were uh, Portuguese or Spanish, and he said, oh, I thought I was coming to a Matt Khan event. I went, oh, that's really interesting. Uh, my surname is not Khan, it's <laughs> so, so, but it's, it's funny when you just listen to those little insights, you might go, some people might, might may take offense to that. Like all of a sudden I'm being compared to Matt Khan or to someone else. No, there's a resonant field that is starting to link dots mm -hmm. and we're just showing up on the radar, mm -hmm. on, on the, the, the web of consciousness as brighter lights, as you are. And so you've put the call out to, I want to find my tribe. Mm -hmm. You know, Steph, Dawes and Julie, and we've been saying this for a while, you know, you each bring a significance and an influence to your field, to your environment. And most, more often than not, we feel that our journey is a little bit lonely. We feel detached or separated. And we think, how can I connect with people and not have to deal with the bullshit? <laughs> yeah? Yeah. So the BS keeps us from connecting. When in reality, there is no such thing as separation. And so what brought you all together today was a, a signal, ping, it went off. We call it a Facebook ad, but beyond that, it's actually the intention. It's good, good. So, so when, when you feel emotion in the body, it is the electrical current of the field speaking through you. Oh, really? well, when I speak a... from my purpose, I feel like I will get emotional. Like, yeah. Well, that's, that's the thing. It does get a little bit annoying. And, and you know, it, it's annoying because you, you want to contain that. You want to control it. You want to be able to hold space and not lose it. And people go, what is up with you? What, what's with this crying thing? Like, yeah, yeah. Are you yeah. just some sort of weirdo? Yes, I am really weird. <laughs> and I'm here to help your weirdness come out too. Yes. Okay? So... Because that's a real Kiwi thing, eh? Yeah. Just, yeah. yeah. And it's... it's um, so, so the living light tour concept idea was the lightning strike that I received over 18 months ago. 
And so 18 months ago, you know, there, there were events on the ground, and as I s said to several of you that we, when we first started, it was about connecting helpers, healers, and holistic practitioners to help them with their business, to help them do what they do, they're, they're here to do in the world, and to do it well, and to be really richly rewarded for that. So 18 months ago, it was, there needs to be a tour. It needs to be on the ground. It needs to bring people together. Good Sorry morning, good morning. So Great that you could be here. So, so we, we each have a vision. And if you just bring your awareness to a time, a turning point in your life, where maybe you received a vision. Maybe you received a, uh, a cosmic kick up the Jatsi and it just says, hey, you know, I can see something. I can feel it. It's in my being. It's in my field. And before you took the leap into judging the self, I'm not capable, it's not for me, I don't know how it will work, and we start to enroll and subscribe ourselves in the how. Anyone done that before? I dig into the how, and I lose the why. And I lose the what. So just sit with yourself for a moment and bring to the surface, bring into your awareness a time when you felt inspired, you received a lightning strike of something, a purpose, a mission, a passion, an idea. Has everyone got one? Or 20? If you have not allowed yourself to dial into that, to bring that into your awareness, there's a reason, and the reason is called protection. You're protecting yourself by dissolving what is your highest potential and it wanting to be birthed through you. I protect myself, I keep myself from engaging it because I'm afraid. I'm afraid I'm, I'm not powerful enough. I don't have all my ducks in a row. I'm not knowledgeable enough. People will think, who are you to do such a thing? Anyone relate? Yeah. yeah. What will my partner think? You know, what will my family think? What will my children think? What will my peers think? And so we cycle through all the time we're conditioning our field through a belief structure, a belief system. And beliefs, believe it or not, are the lowest framework in which to create from. And lowest is not a judgmental term. From a, a framework, belief, faith, trust. There's a knowingness that comes in between faith and trust. I just know like I know like I know. Wisdom is knowledge applied. So if you know a lot of stuff and you never apply it, is there wisdom in what you have received? Seldom not. So... I, uh, I bring up about visions because it is linked to this. That, you know, at the, um, there are many, many changes energetically going on right now. Is anyone feeling those? Yes. Yes? And, the, and you can feel those and you will interpret them with your physiology. You will interpret them with your mind, with the filters through your belief structure, but also through what you envision. And so we're feeling changes, we're seeing changes in, in families, in relationships, in workplaces. Most importantly within ourselves. Do I want to be where I am now in a day's time, in a week's time, in a year's time? Am I done with the past and do I really need to dig into it, to clear it, to be free? Some of the questions. There's also, maybe the question is, there's got to be a simpler way. There's got to be an easier way to thrive, to feel in alignment. Any of those questions? Yeah. So, with a lot of the changes that are occurring, they are occurring as primers. What I mean by primers, the, the you know, excuse the, uh, 
uh, the male analogy here, but think of a lawnmower. <laughs> and you've, you've got to prime the fuel through the line. You push. So that's what it's doing. It's moving fuel, our potential, through our lines. Guess where and what your lines are. Sorry? Yeah, I was like, where's the football? Uh, yeah, that's right. It's like yourself in the joy. You've got so much strength. The, the first dot on the line is you. The line is through you, through your family. And you might say, well, you know, does it just relate to bloodline? Or is it, you know, blood is thicker than water? That old analogy um, or statement that my grandmother used, used to use, being Sicilian. And I thought, oh gosh, here we go. And say, Nana, blood and water. Blood is made up of water. Yes. And so clearing ancestral lines, clearing karmic lines, feels like a big job. So you've got to go back through events and circumstances and trials and tribulations, and you've got to unpick, unstitch, the wounds or the events? No. It's not the case. That is this bandwidth of thinking, this older energy that had you primed some time ago so you could dial into that. So you can move into that awareness and say, there, there's a healing that needs to occur because I can see it in my family. I can see it in my, my extended family. You know, my in-laws. It's in law by contract under man-made legal structures. The fact that they're in your life, whether you have children to them, whether they're still in, you're still in an intimate relationship with them or not, it doesn't matter. So you are the light on the cosmic canvas that has the potential to collapse all karmic lines and clear it. And some people are going, mm, are you sure? It can't be possible. Because we're being taught that we must go and address each event. And when we address each event, a past trauma or a pain, when we address it and we heal it, we collapse it and dissolve it. You can do that, and that's cool. That is expending a lot of energy. And if time is a concept, a fourth dimensional concept. Front back, forward back, your right, left, up, down. That's third dimension. Fourth dimension is time. Fifth dimension, which we'll talk about if you want to, is beyond those. Okay? So clearing the line, the primer, it's fuel through the line. It's all the things that has, have occurred that have led up to this moment. To this moment. And so in this moment, there is no other. Just sit with that for a moment. Excuse me. In this moment, there is no other. when you feel that, you might just get a little taste and then it, it goes off because the mind will want to come in and say, but what about the appointment that I've got straight after this? That's, you know, that's the future. And what about where I just came from this morning? That's the past. That is a bandwidth. That is third, fourth dimension. Yeah. So, Priming the line is why you're, why you're here. Because the significance of the, the event today and the events moving forward in your life are auspicious. They are exciting. Who feels excited about where you feel energy going and where you feel the possibility is, great, good. Who's a little bit, I'm not sure, and I'm not sure. 
Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Y
the inner sanctum of knowingness. And it's BS. And that's what's been shifted and been brought to light. And many of you can see that. The world, you know, Gaia, humanity as a whole, is shifting. And it's shifting for one reason. To dislodge old energy. To free ourselves so that we can continue, not start, continue onto the next plane to the next density. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, I don't know why I start, I always start wearing a jumper in New Zealand in winter, and then halfway through, well, it's just really hot. <laughs> oh yeah, but uh, that doesn't help either, does it? No. So, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's that internal thermal thing going on. There is, there is. We all love you this way. Sorry? We all love you this way. We love you. Thank you. Thank you. The, the beautiful thing about a vision that you dialed into earlier is that it moves you. And whether you allow it to or not, it is there for you. And it comes to you as a lightning strike, what I call a lightning strike. For a reason. It came to you. It didn't go to the person next to you. Yet. It came to you. And it came to you for a reason. Because you as a vessel, you as an instrument, you as an ant antenna, you receive information and it says, based on your, some may say, star seed lineage, or based on your evolutionary experience, or based on your current incarnations, it's coming to you because you have the capability to do something with it. Whether you do something or not is entirely up to you. If you sit on it and you overcook the muffins, they're going to taste like crap. So you sit on it, and then you just bleed out some of your energy because you give yourself a hard time. Why haven't I taken action yet? Why haven't I stepped forward? I'm so afraid. I don't have the support from my partner or my family or my peers. or There's, there's no connectivity locally, which is why doing these is fantastic. So it came to you until such point that you say no. And then it will go whoosh, and it'll find the next available instrument. So, why do we have so many ideas then? That's great. And we'll get into that. that. Makes that confusing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so, a lot of ideas is quite typical of um, those people that are healers or spiritually inclined. <coughs> you know, you might be working with tarot or crystals or ascended masters or angels or meditation or yoga or whatever. You have a very active crown chakra. And you're receiving all the time, bang, 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 and you go, maybe that's it, maybe that's it, maybe that's it. So your creational center at the front of your brain and in, inside um, the lobes of your brain are firing off all the time. Who has shiny star syndrome? I'll start something and then, oh, this is actually better. I'm going to go over there. Oh, actually, this is better. Yeah. It's common. It's common. You can receive lots of information, an infinite amount of information, but until you are aware of what you are receiving, you are not know it, knowledgeable in it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So you'll receive it and go, wow, I just got that, I have no idea what that means, but I'll receive it and I'll work with it. You're building awareness around that lightning strike, that idea, that insight. So, coming into the body is important. And so when you dance around from one opportunity to the next, part of it is the belief structure that says, I find incredible fulfillment in starting something and the passion and enjoyment around the creativity, but I really don't like the hard work. I don't like to see it through because secretly I think I'm going to fail. I don't think it's going to work. Or I'm not going to have the support. Or the money's not going to be there. 
yada yada yada. Or somebody else has already done or someone else on Facebook and they yeah. oh my god. Look, yeah, that's right. Showing up, like everywhere. And I watched yeah. it last week. Now comes to that's right. So if I got on the phone to Matt Khan, and if he watches this, he'll probably uh, find it quite funny. And I said, mate, uh, I, I don't know why you're jumping into my sessions. Like, these are mine. Like, what are you doing? Like, you know, bugger off and do your own thing. Like, that is crippling. And that is a level of awareness that actually keeps you crippled, keeps you confined. It keeps you dialed down, which is what the main system wants to do and has been doing for quite some time through the air, through the water, through the food, through the indoctrination of media, print, you know, online, uh, TV, yada, yada, yada. We can go on and on and on. But you know better, right? You can look at it and you can go into a new story, like I see other people doing sometimes, and they can be sympathetic. because they're in it, I can feel the pain, and that's what they want to do. Feel pain and fear pain. Or I can go to empathy, I really empathize with them. You're still in it. Or you can look at compassion and say, all those people that are just moonstruck by looking at the box or reading the paper every day, I have compassion for where the world is going and where the world has come from. And so there's a level of detachment at that level that does not enroll you in the lower vibrations that keep it in your body and keep it in your cells. Sympathy, you're in it, and I want to be there with you. I really want to feel it. Empathy, I can feel it. I'm not sure I want to take that on. Compassion is the highest, is the doorway, is the portal, is the gateway to awareness. Because when you're in it and you're attached to the outcome, there's an expectation it's going to go a certain way. And when it doesn't go a certain way, someone gets, you know, shot in the leg. And it says, tends to be you. you know? So you get frustrated. So what do you do when you, like, it seems like that shadow part, sabotage. Wants to, wants to come up? Well, does and it sort of seems to act itself out. Yeah. Okay. We'll we'll touch upon that. That's good. Yeah. Really good. Shadow. There's a lot of shadow work um, out there. You, you know, addressing the shadow. The old Peter Pan. You know that his uh, he was removed from his shadow, and he's trying to get his shadow back connected to his feet. We'll, we'll go into that. But metaphysically, the the shadow is the wound. And there is nothing wrong with it, because where there is light, there is darkness. There is balance in the universe. For you to hold one view and say that there is only good, I need to control my environment so all I see is good. So is that like the candle needs the something to push? Yes, yeah. yes. Much, much like that, much like that. So, so the vision for this I'm not sure, um, I'm sure some of you, if not many of you, would have experienced around 2007, 8, 9, 10, there was a shift, a shift in the global marketplace. Financial shift, there was an energetic shift, there was a crumbling, uh, an awakening. And so that really kicked my backside into gear. So by the end of 2011 and 2012, Principally, 2012 was the big primer push. And in one moment, one message with one mentor, I saw and heard that. <laughs> See? I saw. Great timing. <laughs> there was this awareness, and it was a fraction of a moment fraction of a moment, but it lasted six months. My body was changing, electromagnetically changing. I could feel shifts, I was in tears, didn't matter whether I was on a train, a plane or an automobile, literally, or having a conversation. 
As soon as someone said to me, what do you see? I, I lost my, my potatoes. Okay? And in that moment, there was so much information. You don't need to attach yourself to the information so that you can understand it and remember it all. No, it has come into you and to be sparked at a certain time. Meaning you may receive a thousand bits of information and you may be able to interpret and apply five out of a thousand. Know that the remaining 995 bits of information in this example are available to you because they, you received them. Your body responded to them. So in this time at the end of 2012, and it's, it is of its course quite auspicious. Everyone's talking about the end of the mind calendar and all these sorts of things. 26,000 year cycle, yada, yada, yada. But that's, this vision just moved forward and stuck with me. And it was the, was Gaia, planet Earth, Mother Earth. And a sacred geometry, the ley lines, the flower of life, encapsulated. Does anyone know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. And every one of those intersecting circles were points of light. And those points of light were people like us. And those points of light were activation points for the grid. They were on top of ley lines, on top of nodal points, key energetic centers around the planet. And they were us. And they were us living and breathing our purpose. They were us stepping forward and getting up instead of sitting down and waiting for the person next to us to do it. It wasn't taking on the responsibility of the world, it was taking on the responsibility of the self. And so each one of those nodal points, those, those uh, points of light, are people that are awakening from slumber, that have been awake in a layer and now are pushing through the next layer of awakeness. <coughs> So, that's you guys, and you may relate to that around that sort of time. But it stuck with me, and from that point, you know, you know I, I can still feel it. And that's, that's the thing, because that's the truth. That's a truth that says you can sit and bake your, your cookies and bake your muffins and enjoy them as a concept, as an idea, as a theory where you can go and do it. And so the vision did not come to me to sit on. You know, the, the, the frame it came with was create leaders, help activate and awaken leaders, not followers. The age of the guru is part. There are still guru concepts out there, guru structure, because people you know, like to be able to subscribe to something higher than themselves because that's a belief and indoctrination that has been given to humanity. So whether you believe in off-planet civilizations or um, extraterrestrials or, you know, higher beings or whatever, they are us and we are them. And so that, that vision, I share it with you to link it to the living light tool. Have I got everything right at every step in, along my path? No. Has everything worked out exactly how I thought it would? No. Did I stop? I did for a little while. I paused. Yeah, but I didn't stop. I sat and I breathed and I thought, okay, there is conflict here or there is a contraction or resistance. You know, when you, you think, I just want something to happen this way and you've got all the best laid plans and then you feel little resistances come up, like little red lights and you go, oh, maybe I'm not meant to do it. No, you are. Just expand your awareness more. Just go around the obstacle because your mind, based on a belief system, says you can't go around it or through it. So, so yeah, so that, that is 
why we are here. We are here and each one of these, and, and Dawes, you can be, uh, you'll be testament to this because you, this is your third, all three of them. None of these are the same. And as I said at the beginning, they're not the same because it's not the same energy in the room. Mm -hmm. There's, a, there's a, a, a difference in the coherence, the connection. The, I won't even say the quality, but it's like the, the, mm -hmm. the, um, the, the vibrational tone. There's a difference. So, what I'd like you to do now is I'd like you to stand up and stretch your legs and go to someone you do not know. Someone you do not know. And I'd like you to square off with them. No fisticuffs, please. <laughs> I'd like you to square off and I'd like you to share something about yourself that you would otherwise feel uncomfortable sharing with someone you know. Okay? Share something about yourself that you would have otherwise feel felt uncomfortable sharing with someone you already know. It doesn't have to be, you know, like a weird squirrel infatuation or something. Just, you know, it can be. But, you know, so let's do that now. Find someone and share, and then just swap. This is great. How was that? Great. Pretty good. Pretty good. I, I just I love seeing the interaction in the faces. Yeah. And that was pretty cool. Yeah, and just you know, it doesn't matter what you are sharing. It's the fact that you are connecting. Yes. And using words, once words you may have heard, you know, words are wands. So when words are expressed from our center, then it creates power in the field and it raises your power your personal power. Mm -hmm. And so when you speak your truth, your power elevates. Your energy elevates. And so when you, you think about the esoteric teachings, first was the word. We speak it into reality. And so to create as many opportunities as we can. It doesn't mean that we need to be out in the field jabber jawsing with everyone all day, but being open and available to those opportunities where we can speak our truth. And speak who we are, which may be a kind word or being present for someone. It, it might be that someone is present and available for you, and that awareness might sort of say, well, I just needed that ear right now. And you dig in, and then your awareness goes, thank you, that's great. And then you'll back out of it. So that you, if you imagine your life as a wave, if we go a little bit quantum, is that okay? Yeah. So your life is a wave, because you are a wave expression. So in the, in the quantum field, wave energy is wave, is a waveform. When the wave collapses based on an intention, it becomes form. You are form. You are a wave collapsed into a potential as form, as body. And so your life may feel like a wave. Some days, some weeks, some months, you're up, then you're ebbing and flowing. But awareness creates a nice, smooth bandwidth. So you're not like this the whole time. It's like one day I'm, you know, rainbows, buttercups, and unicorns. The next day I'm hurricane, insert your name. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Yes. I've found like this year it's been such a huge thing to do to accept that. And that, I'm not, not that anyone thinks I am, but you know, I'm just have to do these bad days. Yes. That's normal. Yes. Like, that's right. Like okay. a, and that, that's Someone's wonderful, April. Like, really, really good. Because, uh, yeah, if we can just turn phones off. Sorry, sorry. That's okay. Sorry, I have a question. Yeah. Um, the current energy field that you're speaking of, yes. of means if, you, if you're very susceptible and also a little bit lost. Yes. Is this what is making us roller coastering emotionally? Yes, wonderful. So good, we're getting to that too. So, just thought of the <laughs> well, embrace the loony tune because that's, that's the, that's the weirdness. So, so, we're talking about the what's, what's your name, sorry? 
Kalika. So um, Kalika was just saying, is our roller coaster, our emotional uh, emotions, influenced by the field, the wave energy that is being buff that is buffering, and we are receiving with our physiology all the time? Yes, that's a an underlying cause of it. And so as an instrument, you are a highly sensitive vessel, an instrument. And so this energy, let's call it cosmic energy for the moment. Let's get really blue here. The cosmic energy as our solar system passes through a certain uh, cloud or um, field of energy within the cosmos, within the universe, within the galaxy. As it passes through, all energy is connected by filaments through all planets, all celestial bodies. A planet is a celestial body. You are a celestial body. But it is emitted from our star, our sun. And so as we are receiving and getting buffeted with all this information, light waves, code, we are feeling that physiologically, mentally, emotionally, psychologically, psychologically and spiritually. And we are feeling that, that that's where the wrestling comes in. That's where that little bit of, it might feel like agitation. It might feel like, I feel, one day I feel like a haircut, the next day I feel like a bucket of corns, whatever it's gonna be. So it, it doesn't matter. Know that this energy is, um, I'm trying to really turn my, be good with my language sometimes. No, I don't be a bit of a, uh, no, I swear there. Go on, Frank. Let it out. Well, language, yeah. language is vibration. You're in, you're in New Zealand now. No, this, is, this is good. So when you feel, when you feel these energies, you may not be aware that you're you're receiving energies. You just might be aware of the effect, not the cause. And so your awareness says, okay, I've been feeling really like a misfit for a couple of days. I've been you know, a bit cranky or a bit on edge or a bit removed, a bit sheltered or guarded. Um, I've been maybe a little bit intolerant of the BS that I see continually playing out around me yes. in those that are closest to me in, in particular. So, you know, the, the digits on the hand go up and that's it, I'm, I'm, I can't tolerate it anymore. That's because the frequencies that you are experiencing are moving you and are shifting densities. They're helping you to dislodge or separate or remove the old crap, the density. I'm finding a lot of passive aggressive. Through others or through you? Through others, but is that a reflection of what's coming out of me? Or? Excellent, excellent. So we're going to touch upon yeah. what comes out of you and what you see in the world shortly. That's really good. Yeah. Really, really good. So the the opportunity here is to be aware, not to judge the self, not to say, oh, why can't I get my act together? Or why am I so irritable? You know, bringing awareness to it softens the reaction that you normally would have, you know, enrolled yourself into. I'm going to sign up for being a cow, a bitch, or a bastard today. You know, or whatever it's going to be, you know what I mean? So, but awareness actually says, I'm okay with what's happening because from a larger perspective, I know that the shifts, if they're happening to me, they're happening to other people. Mm -hmm. So stay away from all of them. No. <laughs> no well, see, see this, this, is, this is, everyone is different based on our experiences, our belief structure. And so when we receive the same information, we interpret it differently, physiologically, neuro neurologically as well. So someone may go deeper into depression or anger or pain because there is unresolved aspects, events, that are wanting to bleed through to the surface, that are wanting to be addressed. And so when we go to sympathy and empathy, we can either go in and make it our business, which it is none at that level, or we can go to compassion and we can understand, well, you're going through something. You're going through something just as I am. But you, what is bleeding to your surface and what is coming into your awareness as an effect is for them to work through. And you can be there with higher awareness. Yeah. Okay, can I share something? Sure, sure, yeah. Um, I found if you Google the ascension process, 
there's heaps of information yes. that makes it so much sense mm. and sort of gives you a bit more peace and acceptance about what's going on as well as part of a bigger picture. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you. That's really good. So, so there, there are many different terms. Ascension could be uh, upgrade. There is, um, you know, some may even say it's, it's uh, Christ consciousness, whatever it is. But the, the you are being, you, we, as one, are being upgraded. And so what wants to come to the surface wants to be revealed, like in the geopolitical environment like in, you know, schools or re uh, religion. It's being exposed and it's being revealed and so the trauma is moved to the surface so it can be cleared. And so if, you, if we don't do it as a collective Gaia, we'll help you, we'll help us to do that. And she'll, she has her ways. Those who resist will, Sorry? Those who resist will suffer. And yeah. we need to be compassionate about that. Exactly, and that compassion comes from, so if the, the resistance is that, is that suffering. You know, as Buddha said, you know, all, all, um, uh, all pain and suffering. But it's bringing us to an awareness. So as you find yourself in your center, you find yourself in that awareness of compassion for the self first, that your past is really the illusion, and that you can clear and prime that line and clear it, by bringing your awareness to now and bringing your awareness to the infinite that is available to you, then you, f you will be stronger for those that need it or that want it. I, I find it easy, yeah. like at home or places like this, but when I'm like in my work environment and I'm faced with somebody, say, being um, passive, towards me, yeah. that's when I completely just split. Yes, yeah, and, and that's, yeah. that's part of the lesson, that we, you know, less we judge so that we be judged too. Mm -hmm. You know, so we, we, when we interpret it, we might interpret it as, as passive aggressive. That is an empathetic and a sympathetic state. Yeah. It happens in the physiology. Mm -hmm. You go behind and, and up there and you go, right, they're being really awkward or aggressive or they're in denial. There is a pain that is behind it. Is it your responsibility to sit down with them, buy them a, a cup of coffee or a, you know, a, a whole chicken and just devour it, the two of you, whatever, just being stupid. But yet it's not necessarily your responsibility. If they need it, they, <laughs> if you're for a protein fix, but the, um, if, you, if they need it, everyone needs something. They must show signs that they want it. They must. As, as do you. You can't be dragged kicking and screaming. Only for a little while. And so, as we're buffeted with all of these waves, let's call the, them ascension frequencies, ascension energies, we are getting our old internal matrix, our old thought, thought patterns are starting to get um, rewired. So no longer do we, are we starting to... Uh, continuing to think a certain way, we're actually challenging ourselves at a new level. Can you relate to that? Mm -hmm. So we're starting to challenge: is, Does that have to be like that all the time, mm -hmm. or do I need to put up with this, mm -hmm. or is this, or is there a better way? Mm -hmm. So we, we're actually asking bigger questions. We're asking higher questions. So why is this happening to me? This is a load of horse exhaust. Yada yada yada. That is the victim. That is life happening to me. That's the underlying belief. Life happens to them. We move into a manifesto state and we start to think, well, I can be a manifesto, I can uh, you know, create abundance. Um, so I understand that my thoughts are things. My thoughts become reality. That's okay. But there is something, an energy, that is asking you, that is beckoning you higher. Because the question at the manifesto level still is, how can I get what, what, what I want? What do I have to do? Align my heart, my heart, my heart and my mind together, and I need to raise my vibration to match the vibration of that which I desire. Yep, that's the law of attraction, essentially. But it's still at a kindergarten level. 
because I'm going for what I want rather than who I am. And so you go to the next level, and the next level is actually this beingness that wants to move from you. You know, the ancients knew this. You know, sacred, um, sacred vows, sacred laws, you know, working with the land, the, the native land, the people. They understood this. And so they moved with the energy of cycles, seasons, and extended calendars from there. And everything was around the appreciation of the energy and the cosmos that they lived and belonged to. They were and are connected. We are still connected. The psychosis in our, that has been installed in us is that we are disconnected that we need to work hard, we need to struggle, and we need to fight to get the breath out of the matrix. That we are separated. That who you sit next to, in front of, behind, you, there is no connection between you. Blood and water. That's that old way of thinking. Okay, so, so there's, there's a lot... Um, there's, a, there's so many topics, there are so many different topics and facets to the process. But, but no one thing. For you to realize your own power and to step in and embody your own power means your own truth. You set off a domino effect, a ripple effect that influences thousands. You help thousands. Did you need to go on the road and do a tour? No. Did you need to, you know, um, spend lots of money? No. Did you need to do yada yada? No. You're invited to upgrade yourself. You're invited to step more fully into your power, who you are. And to acknowledge that you're here for a reason. Everyone is. Some will stay asleep. And as Steph referred to earlier, you know, if you're asleep, and you're not embracing, or there's, there's this uh, underlying saboteur that says, I'm in full resistance of change. The world is going to grate against you over the next two decades. The next two decades are primers for the next few centuries. And so we don't necessarily need to go into the details just yet. But two decades seems like a long time. It's not. When you're laying, you've been laying the foundation for a long time already. So for you to do the work, it means you judge not of yourself. That's part of the equation. Don't judge yourself. When you stop judging yourself, you will stop seeing it in the world. If everyone stopped judging, could you imagine the vibration of the planet? You know, and it, yeah, exactly, and and that is the, that is the, um, what's the word? That is the psychosis inside of all these little factions, these little uh, bubbles of thinking. The tighter the thought, the, like a cult environment. Uh, I, you know, I, I find that the one, yeah, I don't know how to phrase it, judgment and intuition. I just, sometimes I feel like I'm judging, but actually... So you're sort of saying about another or the self? Um, like, I'm deciding, if I'm deciding I'm moving away from another. Great, so that, that's a very fine line, and it's, yeah, it's a... Yeah, it feels um, like I'm... To, yeah. Yeah. As much as I know, I know who they really are. Okay. Can anyone else yeah. relate to that? Yeah. You might judge yourself in the decision that <coughs> yeah, I need to I move. To think, I need, oh yeah. God, if I judge, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Start to talk crap. Well, yeah. this yeah. talk. Yeah, yeah, that's right. This is you. They're amazing. All the rest, but this is going. Oh, it's good. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. and sometimes I look. It's when I look back and I um. And I, you know, in, in my space, you know, in a quiet space when I, where I'm able to reflect, yes. I can kind of see the perfection of the part that that person mm -hmm. played for me 
in the position I made. So it's almost like God dressed up to do that to me, to make me move. Well done. But on the, yeah, it's... Can anyone else relate to that? But I wish I could just be clear on that Mm. all the time instead of all the other crap. See, if you were clear on it all the time, (laughs) if you were clear on that all the time and you had no contrast, you would not be able to appreciate what you have rediscovered. Grateful Grateful for. Yeah. Yeah. Steph? So what's the difference between assessment and judgment? Assessment and judgment? How how, how can I grow within myself if I don't assess my steps? Okay, so where did growth come from? Yeah, so if you wouldn't mind me changing assessment to awareness. Mm -hmm. Awareness is an observation, and you observe, and then you move in with awareness from your highest, your higher self, from a higher position. And when you're aware, you can say, "Well, there is a pain in another," and me picking up that pain is because I too have experienced that or Mm -hmm. am, and so. So a judgment is, is, feels heavier. It feels there's a tightness in, in the brain, there's a tightness in the body. Even the word. Even the word, yes. Yeah. I suppose to me there's yeah. different ways of looking at the word judgment, though, and I guess it's the intention behind it. Is there a, can we change the word judgment to criticism? Because it's when your judgment is critical as opposed to being an awareness judgment. Yes. So, so let me reframe it, and um, without getting uh, too deep on the semantics of words, discernment is better. So you can discern whether that's the right alley to walk down at this time of night and make a choice based on your awareness, okay? Rather than a judgment, that that looks dark, scary, there's all bins turned over, I can hear cats fighting, and I just thought of, you know, this crazy movie, and uh, you know what I mean? So, so discernment is actually it's more awareness, awareness perfect, yeah. Yeah. so it feels lighter. It is a spiritual term, discernment. I'm being discerning of my choices. I'm discerning of who and and how I invest my time and who I do that with. So quite often we judge ourselves. This is the inverted craziness of our thinking sometimes. I don't really want to sit over there or go and talk to Mary or Bobby or Joey because, because, dot, dot, dot. And then we judge ourselves for having the because. So the judgment has already been laid, and then we can walk away, and even though we might have forgotten about the decision not to do that, it is seeded in our energy, and we it, it get, gets picked up in another event or environment. No, so, no, can I think from that the discernment encourages growth, self-growth? Perfect. And judgment on criticism encourages retreatment. Yeah. Treatment? No, retreat. Re- re- retraction. retraction, yes, yeah, perfect, okay. perfect, yeah. yeah. So, because remember, to judge another is to judge the self, and if yeah. we were whole, if we felt fully embodied with who we re- really are, that you all are phenomenal extraterrestrials, mm-hmm. as an example. You are all off planets, you originated somewhere else, you were here for a purpose, a mission, uh, um, and meaning. You realize that. I feel you know, like that. Yeah, and so when when you when when you're embodying of the highest nature, when you're embodiment of the highest nature, you can look at the world and yourself in the world with compassion, and you can say, even though I feel resistance right now, even though I feel pain, even though I am elated or excited or inspired, there is a bigger dial tone. And the bigger dial tone is this higher energy and the plan that is going on. And so for you to perfect the self, you know, it's, it's, there is no such thing as imperfection. For you to move into that embodiment and say, hey, this is who I am. I, I am evolving, as with so many other people. I'm doing it differently to others because I am different. And so how they show up on my radar, how they show up in my awareness, and what they teach me is all part of the plan to help me free myself from density. Free myself, judgment is a density. Fear is a density. 
pain and suffering, all densities. Okay, but wait, sorry, I have to say that. Because if it's only just one person, like anyone else could say this thing and you don't care. Everybody else could say it, but there's one person, yeah. it's the only person that annoys you. Yeah. Why does it annoy you? The only person that triggers. No, annoys is a good thing. Yeah, let's be real. Let's not kid ourselves. <laughs> the, the one person, if you know, in speaking esoterically, the sum total of all parts is one. You have a big holographic postcard. Remember those ones, or you can probably still buy them at the tourist shop. I don't think you can buy them that are a thousand, like you know, as big as the wall. But if you took one pixel, like on a photo, you took one pixel out of that entire holographic image, that one pixel contains the entire image of all the other 999 pixels together. So when we, when we find we are triggered by one person, the key is, why am I being triggered? And you might say, well, it's something they said. Bullshit. <laughs> is it something they did? Bullshit. Is it something that um, I haven't forgiven them about? Getting closer? Yes. Is it something that I haven't forgiven myself about because I've beaten myself up over making a decision that I knew was I, I should have made a different choice, but I didn't stand up? Or forgiving myself that I'd allow my children or my, my own health to come into you know, disarray? Or, you know, then when we come external and we bring it to the self and you full you acquire own full responsibility for your life everyone that shows up in your life is there as a gift for you yes and when you see them as a gift all of a sudden you start to dissolve this infection called separation it's not like I need to be in healthy happy high vibration unicorn riding environments all the time because I can't deal with that. Hmm. It's when you're in the moment and you just become, I find someone says something and it just, I'm just so overwhelmed with emotion, all I want to do is cry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that, that's, that is fine, and as we were saying before, be real with yourself. Mm -hmm. And there is no judgment, there is no you know, like, oh, that person is really slow. They've got a very slow evolutionary process going on. Bless them. You know, like, I'll send them love and light. Judgment. You know? Or I, I'm, I've done a lot of work on myself. Um, look, you know, it's like this, uh, you know, if you're, a, if you're a Chevy Chase, sort of, you know, he's got this Fletch, the movie from the Fletch, where he's got all these ideas. I've got all these things that I've done. It's all BS. Okay? And so... You are where you are at and you are here today because something sparked, something ignited you, something turned you on, your awareness, your consciousness to come. Mm -hmm. And so to go into the world, I do feel very blessed because I can be constantly reminded <coughs> to engage awareness because this is what I do. This is, I get to meet people, I get to, you know, bounce ideas off, I get to engage and, and see the, the wonder and the joy and the connection with other people. And inside of that, I think, wow, you know, it's teaching me all the time. And so those points of light, we go back to that, the um, flower of life around Gaia and the activation points <coughs> as being ourselves. Do what lights you up. Do bring your heaven on earth. And bringing your heaven on earth means do what brings you joy. Do what feels effortless to you. You know, did I, um, did I come, uh, come forward from my mother and start talking? No. She would say I started walking and then running really quickly. I think I was, I don't know, nine months or something ridiculous. But do what lights you up, and it will give you a framework and feedback. So you might say, well, I work in the job that I am to pay the bills. <laughs> cool. And I really don't like the people I work with or even the company that I work with. Cool. You will get to a point where there will be a dislocation or a, um, uh, an incongruence in the frequency and either the company will bounce you or you will bounce the company. Yeah. 
And so if you stay in it, because I've got to make it work, I've got to pay the bills, I've got children, I've got this, and you go yada, 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 that's a framework of thinking that supports you right now. Does it fill you? Does it make you happy? In part, but maybe not in whole. And so when we engage the quantum field, and this is what I want to take this leap into, when you are full embodied, the full embodiment of who you really are, your fill, light-filled self, then you can create whatever you want because you've already done that. But I didn't create those things. Yes, you did. You allowed it through judgment or through a, a level of awareness. You allowed yourself to experience that. And that's the gift, that's the gold there. So as a, um, you know, when people come into your field, and sometimes the hardest, like relationships are the hardest things to work out. Because we feel you need to be vibrating at the same level as I am, or I need to be vibrating at the same level as you are in order to understand each other because you're from Mars and I'm from Venus, as you know, Dr. Gray or whatever that book is from the 80s or 90s. <laughs> Men are from Mars and women are from Venus. It's okay, it's sort of on the right track, but um, you know, when these people are there to trigger ourselves, to trigger us. Our triggering is showing us where we have not healed. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so when we look at it, we go, where have I not healed? Mm -hmm. And you think, you think back to, you just go, okay, in my logic mind, say that this is the past for you. Okay, say left is past and right is future. Just move your awareness to your past. And you might think, okay, there's an event, could be hundreds, but there's an event. Think of the event. Now, what word to exp um, explain or express the emotion comes out of that? And now that word or that emotion, did a face come with that word or that emotion? A perpetrator. <coughs> More often than not, it does. So the person, male, female, organization, society, whatever it is, would have popped up like a game of guess who. And then we go, you're it. Because you've got two eyes and you, you're in the star, the shape of the, um, the, the divine creation, which is five, the five-pointed star, one, two, three, four, five. It must have been you. So you judge them so that you can in some way let yourself off the hook because I can't possibly be to blame. But if we take the face away, the lesson is in the energy and the feeling. The face has got nothing to do with it. The face, the person, was the gift that was placed in your path so that you could learn contrast in that level area of life. Does that make sense? I don't like it. But it yeah, makes exactly. Sense. <laughs> don't like it. Don't like it at all. And so, you know, going right back to the beginning, for er everything happens for a reason. Everything happens for a purpose. Awareness reveals purpose to you. Yeah. So, before we start jumping into the, the quantum field, which I'd love to do with you. <coughs> Um, and talk about how powerful you are and your creational capabilities. What I'd love you to do right now is, even if you have to pee, just hold it for a little bit longer, <laughs> is to stand up and go to another person that you do not know. And in sharing, share one of your gifts. One thing that you know you're great at. One thing that brings you joy. Okay? Right, so let's stand up, let's go to someone else you do not know and share one gift or your... I'm not going. That's right. Thank you. So, who would like to go first, sharing one insight that's landed for you? I would. Yes. 
I came here for one reason, to share love with everybody and to multiply, to send to this beautiful planet. That's what Fantastic. That was the reason to came. And I find it. Thank you. Oh, full of love. Yes. <laughs> oh. Can tell. Can tell. Can tell. Wonderful. Wonderful. Julie, would you like to share? We were talking yesterday about the word freedom. Yes. And I met this lovely lady just now, and she reminded me that she had freedom and how she did that. And that was just really empowering I think, for you, but it was for me very empowering what freedom can be and yeah, just where I'm at with that. Fantastic. Mm. Great. Two more. Thank you. Someone, people we haven't heard from yet. It's time to emerge. <laughs> emerge. Okay, I'll go. Okay. <laughs> one, two. One, two. Yep. Um, okay, so I came here to hold space with everybody. Um, oh, nice. For whatever reason. Good reason. But also, <laughs> um, so when I first heard about saw visuals and light activation, it was the activation of the mm -hmm. Light, anyway, is always a good one, but yeah. activation was, I think, the thing that stood out for me. Um, it was like, get your A energy. <laughs> um, and to come here and be with um, another group of wonderful people mm -hmm. who share and um, learn, I'm here to learn. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Thank you. Thank you. And we, we, when we teach, like, really nail this. When we teach, we learn. Sharing is learning. When we withhold our learning capability, just reduces a little. Yeah. And one more share. Yeah. Um. I came here today because I started like a group called Empower the Powerful no, and nice. it's, it's around helping people deal with trauma but one of the realizations I've had today is kind of move, like I think it's important to focus on the trauma but more so just the person themselves and I feel like that will be more powerful wonderful. even though it's an important part of it, yes. the person themselves. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful, love it. Wonderful. Excellent, thank you. One more, but I'd like to... I would love to hear yours. <laughs> <laughs> um, the thing that's landed for me today is um, confirmation that I am on the right journey. Um, and something that you said before about the next two decades are really important. And so for me, I thought, good, I'm, I'm on the right path mm. and I'm on the right journey, but it's also really important that I feel. Straight away, my brain went to my children and, and me being the example for my children. So that over the next, um, you know, few decades, my children, well, I'm, I'm leading the way for them and showing the example, so that my children can also do that for future generations. Thank you. Thank you. Be the change. Yeah, be the change. And that that was that was part of that. That vision at the end of 2012, it was lead the light, lead the way. Lead the light, lead the way. And so that is about consciousness. That is about your intention and your awareness that you broadcast all the time. You lead the light into, some may say darkness. It sounds very religious and da da da, but it's not meant to be. You lead the light forward, lead it in all directions. Even, most importantly, lead it for the self first. So lead the light, lead the way. Because, you know, thank you for your shares. Like they're just fantastic and I want to do more, of, more shares soon. Activation. Marketing says we, it needs to be called a certain thing for a certain time to, do, to create a certain outcome. So that people can, can get the content, but get context on how it applies and what it's going to do for them. Being in the room is the activation. Showing up is the activation. You are pinging the person next to you on either side and in front of you, and together it's like, I'm surprised I've kept my jumper on so long. You know, like seriously, it's it's um, it's crazy good. It's really really good. So you. 
are the activation and how you activate more and become higher in your activations is through forgiveness. Through forgiveness and self-love. And so, you know, the um, Ho'oponopono prayer, does yeah. anyone know that? Yeah. Yeah. So there's a couple of different ways to say it. You... We all do have that, which says, thank you, I love you. Very Where good. Yeah. Hiding. yeah, it's wonderful. That's a fantastic, fantastic place to start, begin, and experience. Belief says, well, I've got nothing to lose. So I'll, or I just know it, I can feel it. It doesn't matter which way you say it. I love you, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you. Or whether you put love you at the end, whatever. But, you know, there have been studies, psychi uh, psychiatrists, um, doctors that have said this, prayed through those four steps yes. over their patient files. And they have changed, helped to activate and evolve the group inmates in, 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 um, in custody, okay? So for that, and I mentioned that, is it's a great place to start for ourselves. And one way to do it is if you, well, it's not when you're ready. If it's in your awareness, you're ready. Let me say that again. If it's in your awareness, you're ready. Go to the mirror and say those things and look in your own eyes. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. Can you feel it? So when you look in your own eyes, you're actually, you're dialing into who you really are. And the shell, these layers, start to fall away. And you may feel electrical charges in your body. You may feel a little bit upset. Or you may sort of think, I, I, I can't make eye contact with myself. It's no wonder you can't make eye contact with the world because there's been too much pain. Because what you've seen is information coming at you and you've got to deal with it. Because how you interpret it is that it's been coming at you from outside when in reality what you see is a projection. The cones of the eyes are inverted. They don't pull in, they send out. And so what you see is tailored and based on your belief structure, your self-worth, your self-love, your self-appreciation and, and, and those around you. The, the Ho'oponopono prayer is an ancient Hawaiian yes. um, way that they dealt with uh, family and tribal yes. problems yes. with each other, yes. how they sorted themselves out. Yeah, and, and th yeah. through those layers, there are how much you know, letting go and forgiveness and, and self-honouring and, and uh, you know, you can feel the bandwidths, the vibrational shifts in all of those. So, um, great to pause. When something just goes, yeah. pops out. Yeah, that's interesting. So, <clears throat> healing, as you may have heard, is an inside job. Healing is not hard <coughs> when you're available. <coughs> available and aware. And what I mean by available, it means I am available to receiving. Because we're quite often as healers, coaches, health practitioners, you know, light workers, whatever term or, or phrase you want to use, we're very good at showing up and giving, aren't we? And sometimes receiving doesn't feel right. The compliment on the street, or from a partner, or a gesture, or, excuse me, someone uh, wanting to go out of their way, or not even out of their way, in their way, with you, to help you, can be hard. That is keeping us separated. So, Let's do a little jump now. Can we do that? Yes? Yeah, okay. Just making sure everyone's nice and calm. <laughs> no, no. Just, you know, so the, you are the activation. Okay? Sorry, Which, can I just ask, can you, can you give us some advice in terms of uh, overcoming obstacles that are 
limiting us to grow. And with, you know, within with how to tap into this energy. Because I don't physically feel the energy anymore. Okay. I used to. Yes. But so much has happened in life over the past 15 years. Yes. That's not numb me to perceive that energy field. Good. And I just want to get back here because I know it's real. Mm. But I'm, I haven't um, experienced it for so long that I'm starting to talk to the philosophy. What a wonderful question. Mm. What a wonderful question. So if you can give but, us some yeah. advice just to start feeling this invisible energy mm. again in some way or sort of. Let's go, from let's you. go I know there's tons on the internet, but your, what would be your first step? Let's go there. Let's go there. And it dovetails perfectly with this quantum leap. We desensitize ourselves because of pain, as I've already said. We close down, we keep ourselves removed and safe because secretly we're in fear that we're going to experience the same again. Okay, look, no matter what it is. But from a quantum perspective, and, and ride this wave with me. The quantum perspective is that until you are or anything is in physical form, it is everywhere and nowhere all at the same time. Okay? It's everywhere and nowhere. It means that all the energy, you could call it prana, chi, life force, whatever it is, is it that is in the cosmos is infinite potential until awareness and intention is placed upon it then it collapses and it becomes something make sense so this is the superposition superposition is I am not observing it therefore it is all things and no thing, all at the same time. It means it could be anything, anything I want it to be. It just is. It just is. As soon as I bring it into my awareness, it collapses and forms. So when, why am I mentioning this? I'm mentioning it because our life experiences are created the same way. They're created and dealt with very similarly. What we want for our life, what we want for others, is an envisioning process. And we've lost sight and strength of our own envisioning. Because we've been told and taught that to make unrealistic goals is impractical, immature, illogical, you're living in the sky, yada, 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 grow up. Anyone heard that? Yep. Yep. Uh, yep. So, so those people that often project that feel the restlessness, the urgency, and the magic in you that you are about to take flight, or that you are onto something, or that you are somewhere that they have denied within themselves. So they see through you, your actions, your intentions, their own failed potential and so they will work unconsciously most of the time to anchor you in their reality to keep validating why they made the decision that they did and if I can validate it and I can find proof I can feel safe and I don't need to shift but you know better than that which is why resistance comes in you resist and there's friction and so when friction comes in, you, you start to get, get restless. You start to want to go and go, you know what, I'm going to give you the big bird and I'm going to take flight and I'm going to go on the road or I'm going to leave town or I'm going to do my own thing. And this, it's called the rebel. Yeah. yeah, so the rebel says, F you, I'm off. Yeah. But, the, but this is still just working in a mainframe. It's just still working in this little vessel and still thinking this way. But the quantum potential of you is beyond your skin, which is a communication device. 
because we breathe through our skin. We intake energy through our skin. Anyone getting goosebumps? I'm getting goosebumps. Yes. So when you're doing, when, right at the beginning, remember third dimension, front back, right left, up down, fourth dimension, time. Say this for me. What is that? Just say it inside yourself. Okay? So whatever you said, did your lips move? Did your voice box make a sound? But you heard something, right? Did your ears hear it? You heard something. You said something. That's the fifth dimension. The fifth dimension is beyond third and fourth that says, I've lost wonder. I've lost my inspiration. No, you are always engineering. You are always creating. And so the opportunity is to understand that you are limitless. You are anything in the field you desire. Feel that quietness? That's how you create. So thank you, air conditioning unit. You create in stillness. Because the mind wants to chatter. The mind wants to show and find reason. Will it work? Won't it work? Is it for me? Is it not for me? No one in my family has ever dreamed this big. Or when they have, they've been you know, shackled to whatever. You know what I mean? Mm. So, knowing that you are beyond the body. Some people's field is really close to them because they've contracted and they keep themselves safe. And they've pulled their field, their aura, their energetic field in close as a protection. And when it's in close, sometimes we put weight on, as an example. We can put weight on. We can you know, acquire nutrients from our environment, but we store it. Because as part of the fifth and higher, it's not front and back or time. It's in and out. In and out. Breathe in and out. Your body moves and receives and transmits in and out. Your skin drinks in light and sends, transmits light. Make sense? So when you want to create, when you want to shift and you want to work with the quantum field, it is bringing yourself the awareness to an in and out state. You create love making, creates a child, well, sometimes. In and out, right? Breathing, in and out. You are creating oxygen. You are providing life. So when you can dial into that and feel it and experiment with it, that's what this is. This is your own most brilliant, most deviously hatched plan to experience. And the two things you're here to experience at, at the core of it these are the two primers that I believe you're here to learn and remember how to master energy, how to manipulate and command energy. If you don't like the word manipulation, get over it. <laughs> so mastering or manipulating energy means that I can maintain and upgrade my inner field so that I, through my projection, I can create I want to experience and see in my outer projection. That's the first thing, to master energy, which also means when there's an energy that rubs up against you, you're mastering that environment. Do you respond or do you react? Response is a higher vibration. Reaction tends to be a lower vibration. The second primer is you are here at this time, in this place, no matter where you're moving, in this country or another country around the world, to shift density. Shifting density helps to shift humanity's density. And shifting density is weight. You carry the past, it's weight. You carry guilt and shame, 
its weight. You carry, you know, unrealized visions and dreams and hopes. That's weight. You carry unforgiveness, sadness, anger. <coughs> it's weight. The belief systems can either free you or they can weigh you down. So shifting density is also looking at how we eat, how we drink, how we breathe, where we live, the communication, do we spend all our time around technology, yada, yada, yada. So those two primers, <coughs> we learn how to ma uh, master or manipulate energy so we can do whatever we want to do. We can create whatever we want to create, free of, of our own self-judgment. Second, to shift density. Shifting density frees us from the past and frees us from an expectation that the future is not going to look any different to the past because I haven't seen proof of it yet. So, are you still with me? Or has everyone gone into a... A An os oscillating wave of, like you've got high beta, alpha, state of brain waves. Theta, delta, and gamma up here. So you're probably receiving lots of information at a delta level and as a theta level. And an alpha level is where you create, where you relax and you bring your body and your mind into a state of relaxation so you can allow the creativity that you are, the creative genius, to work with the laws, the quantum laws that exist whether you believe in them or not. Mm -hmm. So, going, I know I'm going the long way around the mulberry bush in answering the question. <laughs> the point I want to make here is that understanding the quantum field is infinite and is all things and no thing at the same time means what do you want? Do you want to go to the past and heal it and, and work your way through it, that could be okay, for part of it. But what do you want to experience? What do you want to have as an experience in this reality? Not what you don't want, because it, all the people that I ask most will come with what they don't want. Well, I don't want this, and I go, okay, I'll give you 10 seconds to flip that, or I'm gonna jump in. And that's not a threat, it's just gonna say, stop, stop, stop rabbiting on, of shit. It's, <laughs> seriously, flip it. What do you want? You have not answered the question. I don't know. BS. You do know. Mm. Well, if I could want something, <coughs> allow yourself to dream. Because this is what this is. This is just a dream with you. Row, row, row your boat. <laughs> gently down the stream. Look into that a little bit more. Okay. You are the vessel on the stream, rowing learning your lesson. Okay. What do you want? And when you understand that what you want can happen part of, as part of quantum law, then maybe, just maybe, you will shift up a couple of notches. And you'll, you'll allow yourself to dream a little bigger, to go a little deeper, to give yourself the permission to do something because no one else is going to give you that. Have you noticed that? No one else is going to give you the permission to free yourself, to forgive, to take the next step, to be creative. No one's going to give you that. So, the root of your power comes from you appreciating and understanding that you are all things and no thing. And inside of that, you are infinite possibility. And so when you understand that, that field of your awareness, what you can envision, expands. And when it expands and you, it may feel like work at the beginning. When you work to maintain the strength and build the strength in that outer field, because you can see further, you can see deeper with crystal-like view. It's, it's, you know, it's stronger in your, in your mind, but in your heart too then guess where your focus is? It's, what in, it's on what is potential, what is possible, 
not what has been. Because we look for validation and say, I need to springboard off. I need to carry my story because story has meaning, yeah. But if your story is so packed with pain and so packed with resentment and guilt and shame, is it really serving you? Is it really helping you to ascend or to, you know, acclimatize to a new vibrational level? It takes courage to step out of the past. It really does. It takes courage to say, you know what, I've been there, I've done, you know, a dozen different techniques, I've seen 2,500 different practitioners, and I've been in, you know, 14,000 hypnotherapy <coughs> sessions, or whatever it is, I'm being totally facetious, but people go to the ends of the earth to find what they already have, which is now, and in the now, you have the capability in your knowingness or the awareness that you are infinite. Have you? Have yeah. you know that you've stepped out of the past? Uh, Can, yeah. Feel lighter. Feel lighter? Yeah. You are no longer drawn to it as a as a creational point. Because I feel like I've stepped out of the lot and then pop. Yeah. It seems to that's okay. That, that one face. Sorry? That one face. That one face, yes. She's still on it. Yeah. That's like an old pattern. Well, Pull just, that. Just lately, especially with those mountains going off in the yeah. other yeah. part of the world, around that time, there's been a lot of those old patterns came up. Okay. Um, can, I, can I spin you out a little bit? Maybe, maybe not. What goes off geothermically or geographically, volcanoes, hurricanes, earthquakes, tidal waves. tidal waves, all that sort of stuff. It's dislodging and freeing pain at those locations. Mm -hmm. And so you might go, oh, but I never lived there. <laughs> Kidding yourself. <laughs> that ripples, that dynamo creates a discharge of energy that hits all of us and that radio wave, that frequency, that current or vibration just goes and comes into your mainframe and what will come up will be an event or a face or a feeling related to the release of trauma at that location. Does that make sense? So are we empathing it? Yeah. For everyone? No, for yourself. So Gaia is doing a lot of the work. She's got a plan. And either we so go with her alchemy, or we jump that, off. Sorry, sorry. Did, is that what alchemy is? Or yes, the inner yeah. alchemy is the transmutation of the, the base yeah. metal yeah. to a high metal. So lead yeah. into gold, yes? Yeah. So the gold is our God self. Our God self understands that we are all things at all times and therefore all people and one. Yeah. And that our lessons in this incarnation is a sliver in time in this dimension to experience so that we can feed back information based on contrast and lessons and experience to the one for evolution. Does that make sense? So you have to look at it from that point of view and you think, gosh, I walk around, you know, feeling so heavy and so, you know, um, in the head thinking all the time and what's it all for? You can, you know, it, it, um, it's not Frank Sinatra, what am I talking about? John Lennon, you know, he's talking about his song, Imagine. That's what we've, we're invited to do. You only can imagine and create from the level of your belief. I can, and I can say, stretch your mind. And you go, Ugh. you think you have to go to the loo? Stretch your mind. But you'll only be able to conceive of a certain level and you'll push against this bubble, you'll push against this invisible, so-called invisible, but you can still feel it, you might say it's invisible, but the feeling is where it's at. So trying to understand the fifth dimension for the third dimension um, brain or mindset mm. is insanity. Yes. Yeah. You can't mm. understand it and so yeah. for that maybe there, yeah, if you are trying to get back to your spirituality and how that felt then, 
that's not going to happen because it's different now. Yes, yeah. very good. It's very, very gentle very good. now. Very gentle. Yeah. Very gentle. Subtle. Yeah. Subtle. Yeah. Yeah. Very gentle, very, very subtle. Yeah, yeah. And here's an example. Wow, Three good. inches from your skin. Let's think Ooh. metaphysically for a moment and metaphorically. Three inches from your skin is another dimension that you exist in. And it is the one that is a light and filled and real with your dreams. Three inches. It's not I need to go to Venezuela or I need to try to get on a plane for 56 hours and I'm going to get time. No, it's a shift. And the shift that is happening around us is you. So while we're busying our bodies, I need to move my body, I need to be busy, I need to be manual, I need to engage physical labor all the time to feel the resistance of my body going through time. Quiet the body and move the mind. When you move the mind, all of a sudden you are going into the field and you are pinging those particles, those aspects and you are drawing them together with your awareness. And drawing them together with your awareness and your intention to experience something new, it collapses and moves into state, into form. Why does it take so much time? Well, because there's a vibrational mandate that something of a higher vision needs to coalesce or work to come into a lower vibrational environment okay so if you are raising your vibration by forgiving the self by showing more self-love by doing some a little bit of mirror work maybe the whole uh, ho oh, 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 doesn't help with dry dry mouth no. um, everything that you see in the outer world is is birthed from you and so when you understand from a quantum perspective, experiences, people, eventualities collapsed as all potential, collapsed into an experience or a physical thing because my awareness was on it. And maybe my awareness was on it because I saw my parents could do it or because I heard it in school or because somewhere in my mainframe inserted as a belief, which is a repetitious thought, by the way, Beliefs are just a thought over time that builds strength. So that's what you've experienced. And you go, well, I, why did I do that? Why would anyone do that? Well, you did, so that you can be in the unenviable, or so in the enviable position in the cosmos of experiencing contrast in this dimension. Because not any, not many other beings have that opportunity. You came here to experience contrast in this density for a reason. And it feels like we're the ones that are subservient or we're the ones that are less than or that we're not as powerful. And yet, you are more powerful because you have the density shifts as notches on your belt. You have worked your way up as a xylophone into new dimensions and you continue to, uh, densities and you continue to do that. It takes work, it takes courage as a soul to come in and explore. So, in the field of potential, that's what I was saying before, imagine that you've got this snow dome, you know, that you shake up and you've got snow and it's like Disneyland or something you've been to, you know, Batislava or something to see a castle. But that's, that's your realm of creation. Your beliefs go, I can push out on that. But in a moment, you can actually go beyond that because that is, the, is just the confines of your belief. So to do a quantum jump or a quantum leap or a, a, um, dial into a, a higher capability for yourself, it is about bringing yourself to the awareness that all is possible, everything is possible. So even if it's just the concept, everything is possible. And it hasn't moved to a knowingness yet. Just keep in, encouraging the, the concept. If everything's possible, then it means 
The past does not equal me, and it doesn't equal my future. It also means that I can be kind when I felt it previously that I should resist. It also means that what I wrote in this electrical <laughs> idea storm as is for me. You see what I mean? Everything is possible. So you start to look at the world as a potential rather than a problem. And so in answer to your question, there are more likely to be 20, 30, 40 things that I've said today that will help you move from this place to where you want to be. And so where you are right now is not who you are. What you are experiencing right now is the direct result of your actions, words, thoughts from the past. It's like a bank balance. That's not who you are. That's just what you did or your vibration up to now, this point. It doesn't define how you are moving forward. Yeah. So... <laughs> Tell that to the rest of my family. <laughs> <laughs> you tell it. Yeah, you tell it. You tell it. <laughs> Write it down. Say, uh, you know, get your stuff together. Come on. It's interesting. So that's just on that. Money does not come from force. Money comes from power. Money is just the effect of the, of the cause, which is your power. Mm -hmm. You drink in more light, meaning greater self-love, greater encouragement or compassion for self and others, letting go of what was and what you think should be. There is a lightness to your being. You charge your body up more. When you are charged more, ideas come in and stay. <clears throat> when you are charged more, you are in flow more and you, you, you just move as a beautiful stream and you don't see things on the way, you don't see things in the way, you see them on the way and you move around them. You don't look at what is right now as truth. Bank balance, truth. Truth, that's what it says about me. Personal development. Yep, they might share that and say that's the sum total of everything right now. Or the five people you're hanging out with right now that are closest to you, that's a, uh, an expression of, of your energy signature. Not really. It's just where you chose to be right there. So, power, your power, drink in, it's the in and the out. When you are in and out with energy, you are, say in meditation, you are breathing in, and as you breathe in, you imagine light particles moving to you and through your pores, and your body is drinking in the light. As you breathe out, you are sharing that with your field, in and out. And as you do that, you increase your field, and as you increase your field, you increase your, the availability of your potential. Does that make sense? Sorry? So you said you want more money well, it's, 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 it's drinking in light, more, more light. Yeah. And so that's why you will look at money, which is you know, the, the most ridiculous way to value the self. And those people that have the most, there is the perception that they have the most power. But it's not the money that gave them the power. It's the activity that, gave, that, that they did along the way, whether it good or bad, it does not matter. Okay, so that's why a lot of big corporations, not all of them, but there are some that are a little bit devious and, you know, they actually have part of their profit set up a not-for-profit. So they know the laws of balance. So they are giving back. Really? They're just bending the laws to serve themselves because they understand the laws. I'm talking about quantum law here. So, so let's, let's think for a moment about the quantum field, who you really are, and what you're capable of. 
what you're capable of is vastly more than what you've already, you've already created and what you've already experienced. Sometimes you need to change cities or move to a different country so you feel you've got the space around you to be who you really are, to be and do what you want. Who relates to that? Yeah, been there, done that. Didn't know I was doing it at the time, but you know, I just thought, wow, this is this is really something. I can be whoever I want. So So let's just have uh, three, three insights just from, from that part, from some different people. So, yeah. I got a, an insight <coughs> with a massive jolt through my body yeah. to work in prisons. I don't know. Wow. Good. Some piece of it, you know. mm -hmm. I'm just thinking. Yeah. Because yeah. I saw... Pardon? Someone said the same thing to me last night. Mm. Mm. Because I feel like, um, oh, I'm going to cry, sorry, try not to. Um, Don't apologize. The, there's like this shadow in me that I... Yep. Yep. Um, and so if the shadow is reflected in an inmate, not that we're talking that you're a criminal, like can, then you can help. I know yep. who I am, but for some reason this part of me this wants is, love. Of course. Of course. And so some people have um, a more available in love because they speak up. Other people hide. And so you've got two choices. It's either an act of love or a cry for love. Someone's horrible nature or mood is a cry for love. Someone's compassion and distance and facilitating and holding a space without jumping in and reacting might be the act of love. Yeah, absolutely. And the thing that you've both mentioned about the prison, there's an entanglement. And that's the entanglement means that you will hear things, you've probably heard things on the way here. You've got, oh, that happened in the last day or so. I don't know what happened in the car, and you know, in Huntley, <laughs> and Erica and um, your friend was the same. Was in sister, the car. Janet. Sorry? It was my sister. Oh, you're Janet, that's right, yeah. yes. So were you in the car? I don't know what was going on, but this is before. So anyway, before the meeting. So there, there's an entanglement. Your energy precedes you. And so you walk around thinking life happens to me, not for me or by me, even better still. This is this high bandwidth, life happens by me. The kindergarten <coughs> level, manifesto, thoughts become things, I need to vibrate, more of attraction, still okay, it's helping people raise their vibration. That is, life happens for me. The bottom one, life happens to me, remember? So, this entanglement, there is a tripwire that goes off. And you start to hear and sense similar things, aligned things. Over the, uh, over the coming hours, days, or weeks. You go, wow, I remember that. Nothing's by chance. So when, when, because all of you now, having spent some time together, have expanded. You are expanded. What you are receiving, what you are hearing, what you are sensing and perceiving, you are expanding. And so as you, you know, in, in a little while, you know, you go out into the world as you, the highest form in oneness is that life is through you. Life is through you, even when you spit. <laughs> life is through you. I feel that. Yeah, just, just put a little... Even when you spit, unintentionally. The, the, whole, the whole problem with spitting is... It's good, good segue. Uh, so life, life is, is through you. Again, remember in and out. My desires, I breathe my desires into my field. 
So the quantum field, as I said at the beginning, or near enough to the beginning, each one of you has a signature energy. And all of, and as a signature energy, you spark, you are designed to spark off with certain frequencies. And when you spark off with certain frequencies, you are designed in that frequency to spark off other people. Not piss off, spark off. <laughs> it might feel like that if they're coming in the unreadiness phase. That's right. They might be a little bit sleepy, but it's, you know, sheep walking. Yeah. Okay, so, so you will spark them off, which means they, we could call it a trigger. You might trigger them, they might go, you just seem so unicornish today. Like, you're just so, why are you so happy? It's so frustrating. <laughs> yeah, they love that. Though. Because there's a vibration to you that is moving within them and their grief, their pain, is trying to keep them from, from dealing with it. And so they hold themselves in resistance. They hold themselves in the pain. And I will drink, I will take drugs, I will, you know, whatever it is, I'll be abusive to myself, sometimes to outside, because I actually I'm abusive to myself. That inner talk is so profound and so devoid of love. Or dysfunctional. Yeah. So we're jumping around a little bit. How are we going for time? Sorry, just one, one second. Sorry. 34. Oh, we've got hours yet. Yeah. So what we're, what we're uh, having right now, we're just, you're breathing. This is called a breatharium. Are you really hungry? You really want to go outside? <laughs> <laughs> so no, no, we're, uh, we're 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 good. We're good. I'm hungry too. Your your question. Um, just about surrender. Like I've been feeling like um, I need to surrender more. Good, good. What I was going to say before, when you um, said uh, about the prison, and you said, but I'm just not sure. I don't know where that came from. We'll all, we'll all do that at some point. I, I don't know where that came from. Like, why would that come forward? Don't doubt it. Remember? Belief, faith, trust. Trust. What comes to you is for you. If you don't see the full picture because your awareness is just on what the prison means or how you, you know, you're keeping the bandwidth small. But if you allow and let go and you just think, I surrender to the next message, which means I'm available. Yeah, exactly. As an example, normally, before I do um, any tour or any travel, I've got everything worked out. All I had worked out, well, was allowed to be worked out, was the flight. And a couple, one or two of the venues, not all three of them. But I had to surrender, and I thought, this is a game. I need to play with this energy. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen very often because I will apply a bit of pressure to make something, uh, to create an outcome. I thought, no, I will allow. And I'll see what comes into my awareness. And in my awareness, I will take action upon my awareness. So from one day to the next, for the first three days, I was living in that day. Yep. Didn't know whether I was going to stay in this place or go to the next one. Didn't know how I was going to get from A to B. That's the, that's the game to play. So we can envision what we want, and I'll, in a moment I'd like to share an opportunity with you to go bigger, but to bring what your divine, your sovereign right is forward so you can experience it. But sometimes we can go so far out with a business plan or with a life plan, one year, three year, five year, 10, 20 years. And we go, that's all, it's all good. So much changes in that time. You change, your values change in that time. So some people say, I don't want to, like I think there was one lady in um, uh, Albany who said, I, I don't envision very far. I can't remember the lady's name. And uh, she said, I'll just go with the flow. That's cool too, there is no judgment. But you'll get to a point where moving 
as a ship on the ocean, you will want a shore. Mm. You will want a destination. Yeah. That's where your quantum field says, am I, am I curious enough to stretch beyond the, the, the limits of my beliefs? And in doing so, let go of what was, thinking that that's what is or should be for something higher. And that higher doesn't have to be the house, the car, the boat, the relationship, this, that, and the other. It's a feeling. Mm -hmm. That's the fifth dimension. The language in the fifth dimension is feeling. It's We feel creation. And so when we lose feeling, we become desensitized, we close down, we pull our field in to us. And we create from the baked beans, the Vegemite, and the peanut butter jar, and that's the, the spread, excuse the pun, of <laughs> our creative tools. We just go back to the same three or four things that we do all the time. So that's our field of potential. And some people may know like you guys might know of someone in your life like that. Could be the next door neighbor. Could be someone on the street. Could be a family member that just can't see past what is. And that's, that's all that there is. There's a fatalistic view to life. Born, something happens, you die, that's it. So there's a giving upness, and you can see it, and I can see it in your eyes too, that when you illuminate, when you light up, your pupil dilates, and then it contracts sharply, and your eyes become bigger. You, you take in more light so you can fuel your projections. Does that make sense? Instead of looking at the world and thinking, I'm taking too much information, I'll become desensitized. So, you are an infinite being. You have the power to do whatever you want. You want to create chaos? You've probably already created a bit of that already. <laughs> so, check. It's been there. Yeah. Yep. Been there, done that too. Okay. Got a couple of t-shirts on that one. <laughs> you can fall back. I fall back into that fatal step though sometimes. I just... and, and that's that's a, a case of just not judging yourself. Yeah. It's just saying, that's where I am today. Mm -hmm. That's where I am with the food I've just eaten that has just fired off a neurochemical you know, peptide or a peptide and uh, a hormone release and a physiological response that I'm addicted to because every time I eat that food, it makes me feel better, but then it puts me in a downward spiral. That's what I mean by your physiology. Your physiology is so precious. And, you know, you may be allergic to certain things. You may have just started some allergies. You know, I'm just going to go bake some cookies and I'm going to bake some allergies as well. You know, that's a, a, a resistance in the body. So when you get that, that go of resistance, then you are not in fear of what you will experience. And so the in and out is trust. And when I trust, I am in communion. I am in relationship with the cosmos. And it works and moves through me. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, your vibration is rising. Your thinking starts to change. And your thinking towards what is possible starts to change. And then why is your body that I'm like, that's my weakness? Okay, well, that's another conversation. That's another conversation. So we can strengthen the vessel. Yeah, and, and that's, that would be a case all the time, that where there is a dislodgement, where there is a shift, there is always going to be a little bit of disruption. You notice when a system changes, there's disruption. You can see disruption on the planet. But no, it's good. No, that there is nice, you know, fresh new energy coming in that is needing to, that is requiring the dismantling of the old systems.
and everything that's attached to it, like tent pegs and guy ropes to our tent that we've been attached and we've pitched in order to live and experience and depend on, the more of these um, guy ropes that start to release, it, it starts to increase a little bit of pain because the awareness comes up and saying, I've been attached to these false gods money all the time. I've been attached to these false ideals, which is, you know, the, the church is the center of my spiritual self. Mm -hmm. You're it. Mm -hmm. You're the enlightened one. You're the master. Mm -hmm. You're the, the event. You're, and you, your sovereignty is what makes the change. Yeah? So, um, all we need now is a... Uh, a Southern Revival uh, <laughs> choir, <laughs> and we're all just like that. <laughs> I, 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 I think that would be cool. I would put a big, big, uh, big wig on and dress up. I think I'd just be up there. <laughs> definitely, definitely. So what you're saying is that it's just let it, let it go, just let it release out, and let what release out? No. So okay, so when I've got to tune to the Reiki. Um, Oh, I have so many people, and I've never had this at all. And I'm like, and I've been sick this okay. month. I never get sick. It's all these new things. So I'm like, I'm not really understanding it. Okay. So if you don't understand it, allow the information to come into you, and this will, this hopefully will help. So I've spoken about you being infinite, that you can stretch your perception, your awareness into what is possible based on what you want. When something arises, whether it's the pop-up face in the game of guess who, the triggered event, whatever it is, whether it's pimples because of a vibrational shift within your body, whether it's you know a boil on your bum, whatever it's going to be, even if it's a bank balance change, if it's a career change, ask it for its information. That is your power. Because remember, you are in dominion over your universe. Because we've been taught to go outside of it. I need to go and absolve my sins. It's like a horse exhaust to another, to an ordained practitioner, yada, yada, yada. Sorry, can you just repeat that about the situation? At the situation? Ask the situation. Ask the situation, yeah, go behind it. So let's say as an example, some of the um, clients that I work with, they might, um, they might have a, a, let's call it a, a business decision that they need to make. They're not sure about what they want or what's the right thing to do in order to create the outcome that they want. So it shows up on their radar and their awareness, limited as it is at the beginning, as a problem. You can stay addressing the problem or in your power, treat the problem as an entity, as a, a thing, and go behind it and ask it, what are you doing here? What is the function? If people start to arise, speak to your face. Speak to them consciously. I'm just saying, you should remember, stretch your mind, still your body. <coughs> and then listen. And what comes forward, did you get a goosey? Yeah, shit, that was a goosey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What was it? <laughs> yeah, so, so what comes forward, trust what comes forward. So, you, you know, you get a cut on the hand, you go, do you ask the knife or do you ask the cut? <laughs> it doesn't matter. Just, you know, why did you do that? No, say, what is, what is here? What is available for me to learn from? What are you trying to tell me? Yeah, mm -hmm. and so the shift in energy. Ask it. That is the pro that's that's the, the, the foundation. You apply that, that's your power. Instead of asking what does this mean or what does this mean to me or someone else, no, you ask it. And when you ask it, no longer do you look for answers outside of you, you actually learn to strengthen strengthen that muscle and that trust within yourself. And you know that you have the answers. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, so there, <laughs> there have been a lot of shifts. Mm -hmm. 
a lot of shifts. Some of you have not moved in your chair, your bottom has not even squelched once, but you have shifted. You have felt something. Okay, so have you enjoyed this conversation so far? I've enjoyed it. Even though it seems that I'm the one doing all the talking, it is just firing you off, remember? It's just giving you little pings, little activation points, little reminders to say, that's true, that's what I've always known, that's what I needed to hear, or that's what I came for, or that's my next step. And the beautiful thing about this, this little mini tour is that there have been some scribes, people that write in the room, but not many. You go to a personal development, and people are, they've got the most, the, the giant hand because they spend 24 hours, two days back to back trying to write everything the presenter's saying. The beauty about you guys is that you have felt it, you are receiving it, you are receiving it, and you, in kind, are transmitting it instantly. Transmitting it instantly, which means that when you acknowledge something as truth and you go, ah, yes, ah, yes, you are then retransmitting that as an instrument into your field. Pretty powerful, right? So when you, just remembering that, you think, I'm a transmitter and a receiver of light and information. Transmitter and receiver of light and information. And so my mind, in stretching my mind, and shining light, Imagine the cosmic web. So there's this beautiful field. Anything and everything can be created in the field. The cosmic web. That's the energy. Your intention is like a light in the field. It brings a level of consciousness and aware, uh, a level of consciousness and creation to the surface. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So when you intend something where you've got an intention, then you apply awareness to it. And the awareness is who I am now, I know who I am here. And you bring all the lessons and all the uh, awakening points forward. That's the awareness, which means I can create. I am all things. I can have what I want because that's the mandate. I come here to create. Nice little shit. I come here to create. Remember? To master it, manipulate energy. And to shift density. Two primers. So the, the more energy I the more density I shift, the faster I create. So while people are saying, okay, uh, the manifestation cycle, I want to manifest, I want to accelerate my manifestation, my thoughts and words into experiences, realities. Yeah. Fill, fill yourself with love. And there might be <laughs> three or four or five things that you might think, oh, after you go, I wish I had written that down, I can't remember what he just said then. So just write or do a little audio or sit and just feel and awaken remember awaken by the question the spot the boil the bank account the pop-up awaken with the question so to accelerate your manifestations to bring what you want forward to collapse it from the super potential remember into form Material, realized, is to dis or is to stop thinking in terms of time. Stop thinking in terms of time. Time will always slow you down. Sounds like the worst oxymoron or paradoxical statement ever, right? <laughs> Time will always slow you down. You think about it, it's going to take this much time to get from here to here. Here's the example, a 
question from a very talented um, healer. Just, you know, he's, he's just great, real sage guy. And he asked, he said, how do I get from A to B in his business and these sorts of things? And in his personal life. And I said, simple. Get rid of A. You become your destination. Light carries its destination with it. You carry your destination with it. Does that hit you? Right. So instead of going, I'm on this tile, I'm experiencing this, and there is this density, there are attachments, there are things I've got to work through, and I want to go two tiles over. I've got to travel through time. I've got to make effort. And I've got to think how. How do I get from there to there? No. Dissolve the how. Notice the air conditioner? Yep. <laughs> get rid of the A. Become the B, which is become your destination. Become what you want. How do you become what you want? and reduce as much of the density or restriction or contraction. We've covered a lot of that today. Huge amount. And that's why, you know, part of me discerned whether to offer anything at the end of these. I thought, no, I, I don't want to leave an environment where there is such a high yield, a high concentration of energy and not go to the next step because I know I can take many next steps just as you can take many next steps. So, so to go from A to B, erase the A which erases the how. It re erases the friction. You might go, well that's easy to do. Well, yeah, just write it on a page. A, line, B. Erase the line, erase the A. But what is the A? Oh, sorry, what is the B? Get very clear, at least clear on your intention to be clear on what the B is. What's your destination? What, where do you want to arrive at? You know, just as the old analogy of rocket going from um, Earth to, to the moon, 10,000 micro adjustments to get it there. Constantly adjusting. Method, you can change your destination anyway, can't you? Yes. Here's the conundrum though, not the conundrum. You can change your destination at any time. It's called free will. Mm -hmm. That's the you fear that stops people from trying. Sorry? That's the fear that stops many people from trying. Yes. Yeah. What happens if I'm. Uh, well, there's two things actually, Steph, it's a good point. What if there's noise that comes in and distracts me in my journey towards the B? Mm. And what then if I get distracted and something else seems better? Cool. Have a look at it and if you go over there and over there and over there and then in the quietness, the silence, you find yourself asking, why does this always happen to me? Why can't I? Why can't I seem to get ahead? Why do I start something and never finish it? If that's the question that arises, <coughs> you have become your own point of distraction, and you haven't trusted yourself to see through your see through your vision into reality. Maybe that vision was got you to leave where you were. But it's not the ultimate where you should, where you will be arriving. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So it, it was the rocket canister, the fuel that got you to take off or to move. <coughs> but while you're in flight, in, in, on your trajectory, you might go. Actually, something feels more aligned, or it feels bigger, and you go towards that, and that's okay. More than okay. Part of the ascension process, part of enlightenment part of the full embodiment of your star nature, your cosmic self, your supreme sovereign self, is to realize that you are, you are powerful and you can create and do whatever you want. 
the awareness comes that says, I can do whatever I want and I can create whatever I want, but what, vi what has me vibrate at the highest? And so in doing what I want, I can be subservient to the needs of others who are still evolving along with me. I can let myself be like self, uh, self um, I'm at risk of saying the wrong type of word here and mis mispronouncing it, not honouring the self. Or I can say, actually, I'm done with that. I've experienced a huge, a vast amount of insights and lessons from my contrast. Dawes, I think, mentioned it earlier. It is, there is a peacefulness, there is a flow, there is a simplicity to creation. If you are forcing against it and applying force to it, it must happen. Why isn't it happening? Yada, yada, yada. Because you were using this rather than this. Does that make sense? Yeah. So when you breathe in and out, you're breathing in, you're drinking in and bathing in the light of your potential and the cosmos at the same time. There's a little how. There's still a how. Okay. Move your mind to, the, to creating the vision and keep seeding the vision and keep moving as much detail around until it feels what you want. The detail is this picture, and the picture is the feeling. Did you get that? The picture is the feeling. So you may see it inside of your mind and you can visualize, you know, this space with these types of people, with this yada yada yada, whatever's going on, but you feel it into being. The A and the distance between A and B is head stuff. It's not feeling stuff. Make sense? So when you want to create and you want to speed up your, your manifestations, you get rid of time by, get rid of, by, by removing A. And then, instead of focusing on the how that picture is going to evolve, and arrive and be experienced, trust inserts, tr trust actually creates that picture. The greater the level of trust, the better the question. And the question is, what, uh, as an example, what does the universe, what does co the cosmos, what does God want to birth through me today? That's a high level question. Not why is Barry being a bastard today? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that, there's a different level of question here. So, when you're asking those higher questions, you're actually encouraging higher energy, higher vibration, to move and coalesce, to commune with you. So, vision is important. Can you envision for others? No. You can envision with others, which is why we're here. And why, as an example, that between now and the next time we're on the ground, you guys coming together, catching up, doing some things. There's a common vision why you are here and why you do what you do, regardless of whether you've been sitting, baking your gifted muffins, or whether you've been sharing it and doing it in the field. It's because you have envisioned the same. A lighter planet higher consciousness, more peace, more bliss, more love, more creativity, more excitement, more joy, more abundance. That's the common vision. So it becomes a we instead of a they. <coughs> so for you to strengthen your mind, you help those people in your field, your loved ones, your friends, your family, your community, you help them vicariously as a result of you strengthening your mind. Strengthening your relationship with, with the field. Because this did not come, this tour as an example or anything that I've achieved in the last, let's say, 25 years having been in the, 
you know, health, metaphysics, and, and consciousness world. Some of it came early on because I applied knowledge. Others came from because I applied force. But really, in the end, the penultimate experiences, those experiences that were beautifully orchestrated and out of my hands, they were the unknown. They came from me feeling it into being. Like here, this morning I sat, and this is a quick little hack for you as well. I just sat. It didn't need to be 15 minutes. It didn't need to be 20, 30, 45 or an hour. I don't have time. It's BS. I sat for two minutes. Mm -hmm. And I imagined that from my center, I was just pulsing in and out. And all I was thinking was this. And when I was thinking this, It was each pulse was firing someone off and going, bing, I'm awake, I'm coming. Because there had been events. <laughs> it's true. Each pulse, doom. I thought it's just it's it's being received. I trusted it was going to be received. Do you understand? Yeah. 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 So two minutes, and then I, I didn't go flick the light switch off and go, right, that's all I need to do. I trusted it's in the field. Let it do its work. Mm -hmm. Quarter to nine, no one. Ten to nine, nine. We start about <laughs> quarter past, 20 past, but who cares? There are so many wonderful people, and it brought you all together. You fought through some resistance to get here, the lack of parking. Maybe there was family things on the way. Maybe you missed a coffee and you went back round and you got a coffee and then you still came. But what, it doesn't matter. You fought resistance, but it wasn't the fight. It was the destination. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I've had a pretty good time. Have you had a good time? Yes. Gosh. <laughs> Gave us that jolt we needed. Oh, right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, as I said to. Thank you. Sorry? More than that, you've given us a connection. Thank you. Yeah, and that's so wonderful. Just taking some photos and being able to see how you connect with each other. Perfect strangers. Not. Just how you connect. How you're present for each other. How you're engaging. There's joy, there's, there's lightness. You know, so we'll be putting it up on, on Facebook um, and. Uh, and encouraging you to, to seed your field, mm -hmm. seed your field. The information that, like this feels really deep. And I said to Julie yesterday, I said, oh, it's a really strange energy. It's like there's a galactic energy. And she goes, what do you mean by that? <laughs> <laughs> but deeper than that. But deeper than that. <laughs> Like it is, it is a supreme energy, and I just knew that the people in the room, you're that activation point. I'm just a puppet, you know what I mean? Like seriously. You might say that you are there and I am here and there is wisdom being shared, but it's going one way. No, you produced, created the environment, co-created the environment for the information to come out. Because... Each, each event has been fantastic. It's been different. You know, Erica, you can attest to that too. Right? Nothing you said today matched what you said the other night. Exactly. Excellent. Can you remember anything from today? Because there was Mary, and bless you. Mary from uh, um, Albany came down to Huntley and she just was so intrigued. She just said, I have no recollection of what you said in Albany. <laughs> <laughs> no, but she said, I just felt so good. I had the best weekend. I felt so joyful and so peaceful. I just had to come again. <laughs> so that's the deal, you see. You go to the feeling. You go to the truest nature of, of expression. You don't need the words. No. That's the A. Go to the B. Yeah. So 
if you are at, at all encouraged, feel inspired <coughs> to take the next step and have a session with me, I would love you to do that. If you've got questions, come and see me. I'm happy to answer those. But right now, you're awesome. Like, just go out mm -hmm. into the world and be you, your real you. And if you want to swap phone numbers, and, you know, there are people in, in the room, you know, um, Dawes and Steph and Julie and a couple of other people that, you know, may want to do this more regularly. Do it. I will be back in spring. Seriously, I'll be back in spring because I want to enjoy it too. I want to play. I want to get on the ground and have a, a wrestle with consciousness as we maybe do a couple more locations as, uh, as well as Hamilton. But you guys have a, a such a powerful location here. You know, there is a reason for the three locations because there is an, they're, they're points. It takes one point, one point of light to activate. You're it. You know, it's like the first one um, was north of uh, Brisbane, where I live. It was about two hours north of uh, Gympie, a country town, maybe resembled similar to Huntley. You know, there was a, a, a good audience, a good crowd like this too. Beautiful, you know, dance hall, you know, where children play, so the energy was great. And as I was sharing, you know, the Living Light Tour and where to go, I said, really? You thought of Gimpy? Yeah. And I went, yeah, I thought of Gimpy. Who would have thought of Huntley? And they went in. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that too. What are they doing in Huntley? So that's, that's the judgment. That is, those people that lived there or lived there and moved away because of something are missing potential. Needed it. Yes. Yes. And so you go to where the activation is hungry. Yeah. Dor said, "Come to Huntley." Yeah. And I thought it was south of, Ham of ha Hamilton <laughs> until I arrived here. We all know it's in between Auckland yes. and, and Hamilton. Well, I wasn't attached. You see what I mean? You don't. If you're attached, you have expectation. Mm -hmm. If you have expectation, it needs to be a win or a lose. Yeah. It needs to be I, I achieved it or I failed. Mm -hmm. Show up. So, what is, is it Taronga? Yeah. Yeah. Taronga. So <clears throat> that's definitely going to be on the yeah. radar. Others been, been coming out. Thank you. As long as I don't split my pants being over there. That's, right. That's a, a final, final sort of uh, farewell. <laughs> oh my God! Could you hold that for me? Or just put on the ground. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Is that the lesson? There are these. Yeah, that's right. So that, that's the brilliance. That's the brilliance. Live lighter. And by lighter, you are you are everything. Live lighter. Okay. Big love. Big love. Yeah, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you.